So how about this for a different style of video? I managed to, well I say managed, I rather haphazardly came across something that caught my eye as now, in current year, writers have to apologise for their fictional characters who are pretending to be human beings for being themselves, I guess? So there's this little indie game called Spiritfarer. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a, uh, a narrative game that tackles the difficult topic of death. Lots of uh, interesting characters to explore, and the idea is that you help these lost spirits find their way, and you eventually have to say goodbye. And it's all very sad and kind of uh, heartwarming in a in a cathartic way. Death can be a really difficult topic, just because there's so many ways in which a human being can die, you know? They can die of natural causes, they can die with unfinished business, maybe, you know, they died with a a, a quarrel with uh, someone they really cared about, and they never got to tell them that they, I love you sort of thing before they went, or maybe they, they get murdered and... You know, that's, that's a nasty thing that can happen. Some kind of workplace accident, something that, you know, they're really frustrated with that they didn't do in life, missed opportunities, all of that sort of things. And suicide and suicidal thoughts and depression and stuff like that that makes you wish for death. Lots of heavy stuff to dive into, and it's one of the things that makes me really interested in this game. However, one of the characters, who is apparently wheelchair-bound, is ableist, as you can see here. Spiritfarer and Dev apologizes for ableist writing, pledges to fix storyline. Hmm. So I guess we'll just go through this article and I'll give my thoughts on it as we go. This is uh, with uh, Eurogamer, by the way. Most of it's just reporting. Don't really have too much of an issue with that. But it's more like, this is what happens in 2020? Man, what a strange year. So, recently released indie game Spiritfarer came under fire yesterday after some players said it contained ableist writing within one of its storylines. A game about death? You know, a thing that, you know, entails... You know, natural causes, disease, accidents, murder, manslaughter, and suicide. Ableist? Hmm. Alright. And now developer Thunder Lotus has issued an apology, which, you know, you should probably never do, because the people who get offended by this sort of thing are the people who get offended by every sort of thing, and all of a sudden, you can't talk about anything. And that's the major concern of this. The criticism was focused on a particular storyline that suggested a wheelchair-using character could only be free in death, which critics said perpetuated the idea that being dead is better than disabled. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not an opinion that I hold, nor is it an opinion that I think anyone I know holds. The tricky thing with disability is that no two disabilities are created equal, because every disability will affect every human being differently. If I lost the functionality of my legs, I mean, that would fucking suck because I like my walking, but it's not the end of the world for me. If I lose my hands, however, because I'm so invested in gaming as a hobby, I live and breathe it to the point where I'm willing to spend three years and a significant amount of money getting a degree in game design uh, from my university. If I lost the functionality of my hands and I couldn't play video games anymore, I would feel like a significant portion of who I am as a human has been severed from me. I would be distraught, and you can bet your ass that I'd be having suicidal thoughts. I would be having thoughts like I can only be free in death. This isn't a 
it's not an uncommon thought to have. So here's the thing. This article doesn't go into the details of who this character is, why this character's dead, and what happened in their life. Why do they feel this way? Because ultimately, this is a fictional character who is mimicking human behavior. There are diseases and disabilities and mental illnesses out there in our weird and wonderful and horrific world that cause people to want to commit suicide. This is not a thing that we should be glossing over. This isn't a thing that we should be sweeping under the carpet. This is a serious topic. For example, motor neuron disease, also known as, I'm going to butcher this, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, nailed it, or ALS. Did you remember the ALS challenge? This uncommon condition or disease, well, let's just Let's just read from this excerpt here. Motor neuron disease is an uncommon condition affecting the brain and nerves. It's nearly always fatal, but some people, like Stephen Hawking, live with it for many years. Motor neuron disease is essentially where the motor neurons in your brain and back degrade, and it causes you to lose the functionality of the majority of your muscles, things like your arms and your legs and, and your face muscles. Hence why you need to be in a special wheelchair like um, Stephen Hawking that has a speech functionality to it so that you can still communicate because it impairs your speech to the point where the only noises you can make are just some mumbles and grumbles. There is no cure for motor neuron disease. The only thing that can be done is to help reduce the impact of it. It's essentially a terminal disease. You can't escape it. People who get motor neuron disease are put in a very unfortunate position where their loved ones have to watch as they physically degrade in quality to the point where they can't do anything themselves. Many people who get motor neuron disease seek euthanasia, which is assisted suicide. Which, since suicide is illegal in the UK, you can't get euthanasia here. Many people who get motor neuron disease will fly to another country where it is legal to get euthanasia. They wish for death because it is the only way to be free of this disease, this curse. It impairs them so much, it has a serious impact on everyone else's lives around them who have to now care for this person. They genuinely feel like the only escape is death because it is inevitable and trying to get treatment to prolong your life is prolonging said inevitable and prolonging everyone's suffering. That's the way that these people feel. Hashtag not all. So for a character, a fictional character in a video game about death to suggest that they could only find freedom in death is not ridiculous. It is not something to be offended about because people genuinely feel this way. Not just people with physical conditions like ALS, but people with depression and other mental illnesses, mental diseases, uh, illness of the mind, psychopathologies, whatever you want to call them, it all comes down to the same thing. It is something that negatively impacts you as a human being. It causes anywhere from minor to major inconveniences. Everyone's affected by it differently because it's your mind. Everyone treats everything differently. And so some people do feel like the only escape is death, is suicide, or euthanasia. So some people do believe that being dead is better than being disabled. Again, if I couldn't play video games anymore, I will have lost my passion, I would have lost my hobby, I will have lost the biggest thing that I care about in this world, I will have lost 
the ability to enjoy video games. I might be able to still make them, but I will not be able to enjoy them on the same extent that I currently can. I would consider that being a less than a less complete human being. It very much depends on what these people care about and what affects them. Thunder Lotus has now said it agreed with the points made and issued a statement to address the problems with the writing. Never do that. Because, well, here's the thing. Some people do feel like death is a freedom from disability. Some people don't. Some people have issues when discussing death because it affects them very personally. Other people don't. Some people have existential dread. Other people don't. If some people are upset by the idea that a fictional character in a video game that is about death would rather be dead than disabled, then at what point, where is the line that we draw where you're not allowed to talk about this anymore because someone got upset about it? Do we draw the line at, oh, it's only about disabilities? Well, what about suicide from domestic abuse? Is domestic abuse a, a touchy subject and hurts people's feelings because they have PTSD or whatever? Are we not allowed to talk about that? Are we not allowed to talk about how some characters get heavily affected mentally by certain things that happen to them in real life because it's traumatic? If we can't talk about these traumatic events, how are we ever supposed to grow from them? How are we supposed to you know, learn about them and try and pull ourselves together and help other people through them and move forward? I find it rather regressive to label this one fictional character in a video game as sending an ableist message. It has been brought to our attention that some of the writing in Spiritfarer is ableist. I highly doubt it. Especially in the case of one character's description of their own wheelchair. Right, it is their description of their wheelchair. It is how they feel. Some people feel imprisoned in their own rooms. Some people feel oppressed by certain things in their life. But that is their view of it. That doesn't mean that is how it is, you know? Some people find the idea that 2 plus 2 equals 4 oppressive. That doesn't make it so. So, because this one character felt that their wheelchair was essentially a prison, that doesn't make it so that the wheelchair was a prison and it prevented them from doing certain things. I mean, it would prevent them from uh, running, as someone with functioning legs would be able to, but that's kind of part of not having functioning legs, is that you can't function like a normal human being, the term normal being used to describe the average. Not having functioning legs is not the norm, it is not averaged. It's not... Um, an able-bodied human being, and thus that is why it's labelled a disability, because you are less abled than the average human being. It doesn't necessarily make you a less human being. You may feel like it does, because you can't perform certain activities, but that doesn't make it so. So again, just because this one character this one fictional character in this video game described their own wheelchair as a prison and their only freedom was in death. That does not mean that being, disabil being disabled is worse than being dead. That's nonsensical. That's... That's equating one person's feelings of this one fact about their life as being the truth. One person might think that they're 
inept, that they're a terrible human being, they're horrible, they're selfish, they're ugly, and all of these other things, and everyone on the outside is thinking, what the fuck are you on about? You're attractive, you think about everyone else, you're constantly, you know, doing good things, and you're better than everyone else at these specific things. But that person doesn't see it that way. That person sees themselves as, I'm awful, I can't do this, I can't do that. But that doesn't make them a bad person. And that kind of transfers over into mental illness. Or as the fancy people like to call it, psychopathology. That's going to be a thing one of these days, I swear. But some people who are dealing with, say, depression, do not think highly of themselves. That doesn't mean that they are a lesser human being. That doesn't mean that they are worse and that people with depression are worse than people without. They could be, you know, a an upstanding human being who is very selfless, very kind and giving, but also very competent when it comes to what they do. But they don't see it as that. They see it as the opposite. But that does not make it true. We, the developers of Spiritfarer, would like to offer a sincere and heartfelt apology and pledge to correct the lack of sensitivity and good judgment we demonstrated. It's not a lack of sensitivity. Because if sensitivity means you can't talk about certain issues, certain topics, that's something different. That's something that you're just not allowed to talk about. It's the he who shall not be named. Well, if you can't talk about he who shall not be named, how are you ever supposed to deal with it? How are you ever supposed to face these truths when they come to meet you. That's the point of talking about all of this stuff, is that it helps prepare you. Tragic things happen in life, that's a constant. And not being able to talk about certain things, like if I was disabled, if I was wheelchair bound, but people around me were not allowed to talk about me being disabled, I would feel alienated. I would feel like they're not allowed to talk about this one thing because of the condition that I'm in. I'm, by proxy, suppressing their ability to speak their mind. I don't like that. I think that's terrible. I think inherently, speech has to be free. And if it's a lack of sensitivity, then... This whole game kind of has an issue because death for a lot of people is quite a touchy subject because of, you know, deaths in the family or, you know, near death experiences and stuff like that. But the funny thing is, is that it's just this one character that people seem to be having an issue with. Which is weird when the whole game is about death, the whole game is about all of this tragedy and misfortune and having to let go and move on. You know? How some people view the world in a very cynical way, and other people manage to find the light and all that sort of thematic stuff. And then we've got, uh, you know, standard corporate apology TM, which I'm surprised that people actually uh, bought up but I guess that might be in part due to how Thunder Lotus is changing the story. Which I find abhorrent. Because these people who are offended, I think it's safe to say that they're not offended on their own behalf. I think they're offended on someone else's behalf. They're being offended on behalf of all people disabled. Well, have we talked to all people disabled? Have we spoken with them? Have we said that this one fictional character in this video game views their wheelchair as a prison and would rather have the sweet release of death? Is that offensive to you? Again, theoretical. If I was wheelchair bound, I would be offended that you thought I was offended. 
How dare you think I have th such thin skin? How dare you think that just because one character in a video game has this view on being in a wheelchair, that that somehow means that I have to be upset? It's this weird world of moral busybodying and virtue signalling that I just can never get behind because I am guess I would be rather traditional in saying that be offended for you and you alone. Do not feel bad on behalf of someone who does not themselves feel bad. And on the topic of them changing the story, if the specific story about this character who is wheelchair bound resonated with me very strongly, I would be very upset at the mere notion that they would change it just because it might have offended some moral busybodies. Because again, I don't actually believe that the people who are up in arms about this are themselves disabled. Maybe they've got some interesting things going on in their head, but I wouldn't say they're disabled. Because at the end of the day, we're looking at the moral outrage of this one group versus the cathartic satisfaction of this other group where this story would have resonated very strongly with them. Maybe they've got a family member who's disabled, who went through some really tough times. Maybe they themselves are disabled and have themselves gone through some really tough times. Maybe they're not even physically disabled. Maybe they just struggle with depression and really low times. And the idea of something that is attached to you being your prison, you know, like your room or your house or the town that you live in, or an institution like school or work. These aren't uncommon things. These aren't uncommon ideas. So this character could very reasonably have resonated with a lot of people, and now, and now that's being taken away for the sake of some moral busybodies who have to, you know, stand up for the disabled. Sorry, is that, is that ableist for me to say stand up? Am I not allowed to say stand up because that's ableist? Ooh, sorry. Thunder Lotus acknowledged the writing unintentionally reinforced ableist views. Does it? I would have to look at it myself. And maybe this will have been edited in throughout the video. But... The idea of someone who views something in their world that is essentially forcibly attached to them as a prison, as a trapping, as something that they cannot be free of. Not an uncommon view. I felt trapped by my school when I was younger because, I mean... God damn, 13 years of straight education? Woof, I did not care for it. But you have to go through it because, you know, it's it's education. I didn't care for it. I didn't want to be there. I just kind of plodded along doing whatever I was told because it was whatever. It was just the daily routine. So maybe I could have resonated quite strongly with this story, but no. Nope. Not anymore, because now it's being changed. And maybe it will be changed for the better, and it will still be amazing. But the principle of changing your story because some people were upset at the moral messaging of a fictional character, I can't get over that. You know, you can have characters, you can have good characters, relatable characters in narratives that do things or think things that you yourself do not agree with. You know, maybe a character decides to kill someone that you would have not killed. Maybe they decide to um, pursue something that you would not pursue. 
Maybe they decide to take revenge where you would not, or that they drop the pursuit of revenge where you would continue, continue the pursuit of revenge. But that doesn't make the character any less relatable or any less well-written. It does not stop the character from being different from you. That's the thing. You are not these characters, and these characters are not you. They have two different worldviews. And that's the beauty of storytelling, is that you get to explore all of these characters that have all of these different ideas and worldviews, and how they go about problem-solving and the troubles that prevail in their lives. They're not the same ones as we do, but we can still relate to them because there's similarities that we can draw and undermine the empathetic spirit of the game. Now, that's an interesting one because I can be very empathetic to someone who feels trapped in their life. Again, for one reason or another, maybe they're wheelchair bound. Maybe they feel like they can't do anything, like they can't escape. They're being essentially oppressed by an institution like, again, school or work or whatever. I can personally relate to that. I can personally empathize with that. The desire to be free of something, but not seeing a direct path to that freedom. I think that's something that all humans can empathize with. So, from the sounds of it, I do not think that having a wheelchair-bound character view their wheelchair as a huge negative, as a huge detriment to their lives, to their ability to be free, to wish for death, to be free of the wheelchair. I do not see that as undermining the empathetic spirit of the game. To correct this, the narrative team has pledged to re-examine their work on the game and fix any any similar slash parallel perspectives or words that run counter to the inclusive values that we've built our company around. Ouch. When you make a game for everyone, you make a game for no one. To include everyone is to include no one. Again, where do you draw the lines? If disability is off the tables, Surely the whole game is off the tables, because again, death is a very touchy subject. It's not very inclusive, because nobody can tell you what happens when you die other than your heart and brain stops and you become maggot food. After that, we don't know. Some people think that there's an afterlife, that there's there's a beautiful world on the other side. Some people think we get reincarnated into a slime or something. Other people, hey, you just sort of rot, that's it, you know? So, surely, to have this idea that, you know, you're a spirit fairer, and that's what life is like after, well, life, surely that's not very inclusive, because it's not including the people who don't believe there's an afterlife. This is the problem, you see. When you try and include everyone, you can't include everyone, because people have not just differing, but clashing perspectives on things. You can't include the Big Bang Theory, but also the Christian creation myth. Those two things do not coexist. It's either one or the other, or you make a hybrid. But even if you make a hybrid, that's not including the Big Bang Theory. That's including the Big Bang Christianity hybrid creation myth. They're two differing perspectives that don't mesh well together. And this is an interesting wording to me personally. Any similar or parallel perspectives or words that run counter to the inclusive values that we've built our company around. So, for a character to say that death is the only freedom from being wheelchair-bound, saying having a character that says that is not inclusive. 
But there are people who feel like that. That is a thing. And again, it's not specific to being wheelchair bound. A lot of people feel that way. They feel like they can't escape. So to remove that perspective from the game, is that not removing inclusion from the game? Is that not running counter to the inclusive values that you've built your company around? It's very interesting once you start looking deeper into the the whole idea of inclusivity. And some inclusions, fine, sure, whatever. Naturally, right? You, you want to include the people that you want to interest with your product. If it's a video game, you want to interest gamers. What are gamers interested in? They're interested in games. So you make a game, and you make it good, and you make the gameplay fun. If you want to draw in people who like a good story, well... You gotta make a good story. But building any product means that you're inherently not going to appeal to everyone. A certain art style, as I bump my mic, a certain art style, a certain musical composition, certain style of animation, certain uh, character types, personalities, Gameplay mechanics, narrative, world, all of that sort of stuff. You have to make it specific, but by doing so, you're not including people who don't like that stuff. Which again, is running counter to the inclusive values. Unless you mean inclusive to be something else, like, um, you know what the woke crowd would call inclusive, you know, being inclusive to uh, black people and Asians and women and lesbians and all that sort of stuff, and disabled people. But I have to ask, if I look at a character and I don't see a mirror, does that inherently mean that I'm not included? Well, The answer is no, and I would think that most people watching this would understand that the answer would be no. Does the character share similar values? Does that matter to include me in a game? Does that matter to include me in a narrative that there has to be a character that shares my worldview? Does it have to be all of the characters that share the worldview, or just one? Well, what if that character shares some of the worldviews, but not all of them, or they have an abrasive personality that I just don't like? Does that stop me from being included? Does there have to be a, a white character in order for me to be included? Does there have to be a gamer in order for me to be included? Does there have to be someone who has a fucked up foot? Do do they have to... I don't know. Do they have to have a hitchhiker's thumb? Because I have a hitchhiker's thumb. And if I don't see hitchhiker's thumb... Well... Does that mean I'm not being included? I don't know. How far does this go? At what point do you draw the line of... No, that's ridiculous. Why do we have to work around that? But the thing is... Is that if enough people make enough of a moral outrage about this stuff, then they sort of do have to include it. Because they've already shown that they're willing to bend the knee on certain topics. So what are they not willing to bend the knee on? It's a shame that Thunder Lotus missed the mark on this. I have serious reservations about saying they missed the mark on this. Spiritfarer has received critical acclaim for its thoughtful exploration of the topic of death. Yes, of which the exploration of topic of death kind of requires suicide and suicidal thoughts to play a part in that because that's, you know, that's a part of the topic of death is suicide because suicide causes death and euthanasia and suicidal thoughts and desiring death as a freedom to whatever trappings of life that you feel like you have. The apology and pleasure to correct the writing has been generally well received by fans. Not by me, though. 
And I imagine by people who, again, really connected to this story, I imagine they're not going to be pleased by this. And I imagine people like me who are very principled against changing your story for the sake of moral outrage. I don't think any of us are pleased by this. And it's good to see a developer own up to its mistakes. Well, I wouldn't really call this a mistake. I, I would have called this uh, very deliberate. Uh, I, I would have thought it would be a thoughtful exploration of the topic of death. Because as I keep saying, suicide, suicidal thoughts, desire for death for as a freedom of the trappings of life. I wouldn't have seen that as a mistake, but... There you go, Thunder Lotus saw it as a mistake. That's a bit of a shame, really. Because, like I said, I was quite looking forward to playing this game, and maybe I'll still enjoy it. Maybe I will still find it amazing, but I can't help but wonder, when I play it, will it be as good as it was before they made these changes? So I thought I'd look up a little bit more about this character, just to you know, get a little bit more context about it. So here we have Gustav. Uh, his point is that life is inherently meaningless, but we give it meaning through creating art. He was likely in a wheelchair in the later part of his life, which is why his spirit is a bird which can fly free. And his journey, and his journey in Spirit Spiritfarer is him coming to terms that as cynical as he may be about that, it has no inherent meaning either. Now, isn't that interesting? His spirit is a bird which can fly free. He values freedom and feels like the wheelchair prevents him from being free. And his journey in Spirit Spiritfarer is him coming to terms that as cynical as he may be about that, there is no inherent meaning either, meaning that he might be in a wheelchair, but, you know, it is what it is. Basically him coming to terms with that. And he is, you can tell, very cynical. His point is that life is inherently meaningless. You don't really get much more cynical than that. But there is a little bit more of a positive side to it in the we give it meaning through creating art. So that sounds very in character for Gustav, the bird who is in a wheelchair, to view the wheelchair as a hindrance, to view it as a trapping of life, and that there is freedom in death. That seems very in character, very considerate. It's, it seems like, you know, the writer has thought about this, has given it great consideration. I would have thought that it's a thoughtful exploration on the topic of death. And on the topic of this particularly cynical character and his view of being in a wheelchair and him coming to terms with that. I don't see... What's particularly wrong with that? But anyway, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he says something extremely offensive in the game. You know, maybe, maybe he he really is just ableist to the nth degree, and you know he definitely doesn't come to terms with the fact that hey, he's he's in a wheelchair. But you know, that it be. So I thought I'd go through and. Have a look at some of the comments, see what everybody's saying, and it's a bit of a mix, I've got to be honest. Having a look at the, well, in order of best to worst, apparently, we have, would have to see the details of the storyline slash dialogue to understand if this is actually anything. I think it's pretty mean-spirited to infer, from a complicated subject, that what they're saying is being dead is better than disabled, unless it's really presented that way. The desire for freedom from illness and ailment is hardly a contentious point. Those who seek euthanasia might have something to say about it. A fair point, I think. 
If it's just, I'm in a wheelchair and I seek the sweet freedom of death, yeah, maybe it's a thing. But once again, they don't really go into it in this article. In quotes here, it's a shame that Thunder Lotus missed the mark on this. People aren't perfect and they handle it well. This kind of holier-than-thou statement sucks. I'm not entirely sure what uh, he means by that, but... We've got the writer essentially accusing this guy, or gal, of uh, removing the context. Nice of you to crop out the half the paragraph to fit your point. Well, I'm not really sure what other context there is. It's a fairly neutral it's a very it's a fairly neutral article other than the it's a shame that Thunder Lotus missed the mark on this. The writers making their point known that they think that the original direction was a bad thing. And the piece saying it was good that Thunder Lotus acknowledged the mistake and that the rest of the game is pretty thoughtful. I'm honestly not sure why you take issue with this. Neolit is saying they heard the critique and not only apologized, but also will take action to correct. Great team. And Kiliko replied with, being apologetic doesn't exempt you from criticism, which I think we can all agree is true. I'm not negative towards the critics, I'm negative towards giving them another kick when they admitted they did wrong. But did they do wrong, though? That is the question. Which is what the writer of this piece is doing, in my opinion. I think the writer of this piece is reporting that they that Thunder Lotus got backlash for a certain fictional character in their story having certain views on themselves. And now they're trying to rewrite the... Well, they're trying to rewrite the game. Because they think they've done wrong. Which I'm not sure that they have. I think it's definitely up for debate. I've played and completed the game, which is a masterpiece. I recall this storyline, but I did not pick up any inference of better, than, of better to be dead than disabled. But maybe I just missed it. Well, that's the thing. I imagine most people who go through the game who aren't looking it at things through the lens of everything is offensive, they probably completely missed it. They probably just thought that that's what this character feels because they are a character and they do not represent other people, as is the same of everything, right? Like, I don't represent people of my sexuality or my race or gender or anything like that i sh i i might speak about um ideas and ideologies that i have that other people might share but i don't speak on what it is like for all people who share some similar trait as me I haven't played the game and i'm not a wheelchair user so i'm aware that I'm not the person to decide on what other people find acceptable or not. I agree. Deciding what is and is not acceptable to other people is ridiculous. They are presumably functioning adult humans who can decide that stuff for themselves. They have a voice. Speech is free. You can use it to communicate these things. That's that's what human beings do. That's how we get our ideas across to one another. We use our speech, which is free, by the way. However, it must be really hard to write from a perspective that presumably isn't your own. I mean, that's true, but that's why you try and understand your character as deeply as possible. If you're writing a character, you want to know what their goals are, what their beliefs are. You want to under you want to know where they're coming from so that you can understand them better, so that you can write them better. And to get the balance right between portraying what you see as being the true feelings and relationship that one fictional character has with their own abilities versus characterizing an entire group of people or to be seen to be doing so, that seems pretty tricky to me. And that's where I diverge. I don't think that writing a fictional character that has their own abilities or whatever, I don't think that's in that 
is characterizing an entire group of people. None of Will Smith's characters characterize all black people. Some of them might characterize some stereotypes, or they might characterize certain kinds of people, but they do not characterize black people in their entirety. Because, you know, not all black people act the same, as is self-evident by not all humans act the same. No two people are the same. And the part about ought to be seen to be doing so, that's very up to an uh, up to interpretation, which going back to what you said earlier, I don't think anyone should be able to decide what other people find acceptable or not. So to be seen to be being offensive towards a certain group, I don't think we can say what is and is not effective offensive to certain kinds of peoples. They decide that on their own. They Again, they are human beings. They have their own voice. They have their own opinions. They can um, present that how they wish. I was a relatively infrequent wheelchair user as a child, cerebral palsy, so I cannot speak to a lifelong experience by any stretch, but I can offer my perspective. Even as an infrequent user, I would be met with condescension and pity for it being a horrible or limiting, you can imagine the rest of the thing. Well, I imagine people on the internet telling you that you've been offended by a fictional character having a certain perspective, I would consider that incredibly condescending. And basically all of those times were meant with sincerity. It wasn't a jibe or to make me feel inadequate, it was their idea of support. But that general attitude is what felt so undermining. I am fine with being disabled, I don't even think about it, until I'm looked at like some hapless puppy. It doesn't happen much anymore, but it does still happen. The minimization of you as a person through clumsy rhetoric is in which is intended as support, is almost worse than being straight up insulted. It makes you think that's, that's all people see you for. Which again is how I feel when people tell me that I've been offended by something. Story time with Paxo. Back in, I guess, for the Moroccans, this would be high school, but for the UK folks out there, I was in sixth form. A friend and I had this in-joke where we referred to each other as uh, characters from when the Yogg's cast did um, D&D, their space-themed D&D, Yogg's Quest 2. Uh, my friend was Duncan, and I was Deborah, the hairdressing, um, very effeminate pilot who was just mad. Played by Sips. Great um, spontaneity and stand-up, I suppose. And I just went, yeah, fuck it, why not? That's funny. I share no similarities with the character, but fuck it, it's funny. So I'd be like, all right, Duncan, he'd be like, all right, Deborah, and back and forth and that sort of thing. In our photography class, which was majority women, by the way, um, pretty much all of them, and even women from other classes who were just part of the friendship group, found it very offensive on my behalf that my friend was calling me a girl's name. Which was almost insulting that they would assume that I have such thin skin that I would be insulted by this joke that I am a part of, that I am laughing with, that I am having a good time with. To the point where my friend, who is relatively thick-skinned and likes to pull the shock humour jokes, um, came up to me and was like, does this actually, is this annoying? Like, does this upset you in some way, shape, or form? To which I essentially responded with, No, it's funny as fuck. Keep doing it. These people keep getting offended and getting their hizzies in a tizzy. It makes it even funnier. Keep doing it. I love it. 
being told that you are offended by something that you're not being offended by is one of the most condescending things I think anybody could do. And so for these people on the internet to get upset about this character who feels essentially all this character is, is they feel trapped by something in life and they look as death as an escape. The visualization of that feeling trapped was disability. It could have been anything, but that's a very strong and powerful way to visualize that. It's kind of difficult to visualize um, a character feeling trapped at school or work or in society or, or whatever, because that's more of a concept. But feeling trapped by something physical, like a disability, is a lot easier to identify, and it's a lot easier to put in something small, like character design. But this person is making it sound like the writing was at fault, that it was clumsy rhetoric. Which, I don't think it was. I mean, this character, from what I understand, was only in a wheelchair for his later years, and it made him feel trapped. It was anyone who was put into that position later in life probably would. I think it's self-evident that people who are born with disabilities don't really feel bad about it, because they're born with it. That's just their life, you know, that's all they know. But people who previously had the freedom of their legs and then lost their legs later in life, they know what it's like to be able to walk and they miss it. it, it that's, it's normal to miss something that you used to have that you don't have anymore. I mean, when men get old, they get erectile dysfunction, right? That, that's just a thing and it, it's very upsetting that your pee-pee don't work you know? So I don't think it's clumsy rhetoric, and from the sounds of it, of what we looked at with um, descriptions of the characters, it seems pretty well thought out. It's not that hard, you just ask the group that's being represented, do a little research, go on social media, contact advocate groups, or hire a proofreader. You spend any time in disabled circles and you see the same thing coming up, people writing about us talking without talking to us. Do you need to talk to someone in order to have a character that shares a certain trait with you? If someone is writing a white character, do they need to talk to me and consult with me? What does a white character act like? Or, or maybe, you know, they, they want to make a character who's spent most of their life living in the country. Do they come talk to me because I, I've lived in the country for 21 years? Most of my life? No, I, I don't think so. I think to be knowledgeable of the subject is beneficial to be able to write better characters, but I don't think you need to talk to people about this. Again, more knowledge is more beneficial to be able to write a character like that, but again, I, from what I understand, this isn't a character who's been disabled for their entire life. And the thing is, with this character, it is a character. It's an imitation of a human being. Human beings are very complicated. There are a lot of different things that human beings can think of and have opinions of, you know? One person might view the loss of their legs as the worst thing on the planet and they wish for the sweet relief of, of death. Other people who lose their legs are going to be perfectly fine with it. They're going to be able to move on like it's nothing, you know? Imagine if Eurogamer got this scathing with articles about predatory microtransactions and other forms of monetization. Yeah, well, we live in current year. Predatory microtransactions as kind of blasé, 
but a character in a wheelchair, whoa, that's something to rustle your jimmies. Very strange. I've only just started playing this game, not seen the storyline at all yet. I'm sure maybe it was a happy mistake, as essentially you are setting spirits free, and I assume crossing over will grant you any wishes or true happiness and health, etc. The ideal heaven. Difficult one, hopefully they can adjust the story context, etc. I will keep out an eye out for the pat. I will keep an eye out for it, unless they patch it out, etc. Yes, and, and that's something that hasn't been discussed at all, is that this character, his journey in this game is him coming to the terms with the fact that, well, he's he's in a wheelchair now. And that's just the way it is, and, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's not the worst thing that could have happened to him. It, it essentially is freeing with freeing him without him removing the what he sees as the trapping. Which I would have thought that that would have been good, you know, a character who starts off very cynical, who views being in a wheelchair as a very negative thing, but then he comes to terms with it and he learns to cope with it. He learns that it's not all that bad and, you know, whatever. I would have thought that would have been brilliant. I've not come across this part in the game yet, but people have different perspectives, and what I mean is those that have only known life in a wheelchair to those who have ended up in a wheelchair due to accident, etc. So, a telling of a story will be wholly different from one person to the next. I have a couple friends whom have ended up now using a wheelchair due to circumstances, and I know their views will be so different from those from that from those that have used all their lives. It's very weirdly worded. It's now a different outcome for them, as they were used to not being in a wheelchair. Whether they think they'd be better off dead, I wouldn't know. Neither have said, nor have I asked. Man, you really need to spell check. Nor have I asked them. They are still the same people I've known for a long time and wouldn't change anything I think about them. Exactly. Uh, people, Different people have different perspectives. This character, Gustav, I think his name is, he begins the story being like, this is, this is bad. And then he goes through the journey and then he learns, this isn't so bad. And he kind of gets over it. That sounds like a story arc to me. Did any of the reviews pick up on this? Many film critics would point this sort of thing out, yes, because most movie critics are, well, hmm. Let's just go with the term special. How many of the reviews were written by disabled people? <laughs> Basically pointing at the idea that you can only write about... Um, you can only write about characters if you uh, share qualities of the character. And the, the following comment is, Is this a serious comment, Law? I don't think it is. I think it's very sarcastic. If that's... If Plash's comment there is a serious comment woof uh, you know you do know that stan lee wasn't a superhero steven spielberg didn't speak to et and create a film based on of his story people couldn't write what they want and perceive things differently also if it's true that the story was based from his experiences that means that this is how the person felt about their disability it's sad but it's their thoughts and it was put across and that's kind of this game isn't it it it's a bit sad, it's a bit depressing, but it's a bit hopeful and a bit cathartic. It, it, it's a bit of a wild ride, from my understanding. Ooh, we get to my uh, my favorite section. I think we should stop writing. I think we should stop writing stories about anything meaningful because if you do, there's always something that someone can, in some way, interpret wrong, and then it's a huge thing, and everyone has to apologize, and they're basically a Satan, etc. Welcome to current year. I agree with this. Imagine if all books, movies, and TVs were like this. Not that it's not that it's bad. Not that it's not bad enough already. Wouldn't be much interesting being released. Hundred percent agree with this comment. Eplebit. Eple. Oh my god! What a name. Eplebit. There you go. Apple. 
Morning, Nipple. 100% agree. I mean, where is the line? At what point do you stop being offended by something? At what point is... What is the line at which something goes from not offensive to offensive? Does that line shift? Where can we define it in any way, shape or form? Or is it just, you know, spur of the moment, we find this offensive now, therefore it is bad, therefore you can't have it. And it does stifle creativity because it prevents you from being able to talk about certain topics. Which, in essence, is not freedom of speech. You're not allowed to talk about this, you're not allowed to talk about that. That is, by definition, censorship. Which, by definition, is not free speech. It limits the, th the things that you can talk about, you can discuss in these narratives. Which, you know, I would assume everyone can come to the same conclusion that that limits creativity because there are literally less things that you can talk about. Person with a username that I refuse to read out. Or just hire, consult, and have more than one character from minority if we are doing something like that. I don't know why we need to consult someone of that shares same traits as someone else to be able to write about them. Again, goes back to that thing, like, does a gay person need to be consulted when someone's writing about a, a gay character? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, more knowledge is more beneficial, of course, but you don't need to. It's not required in any way, shape, or form. If you have all the knowledge that you feel like you need to be able to create a character, then why not be able to create the character? Or, or do you have to have a, I, I guess, a disability consultant that gets to check out your script? And if they don't like what's going on, then you have to change your script because it said a mean thing about someone. I don't know. To me, that seems like injecting a bureaucrat into the creative circle. Which, if we know anything about publisher tampering in video games, is probably not such a good thing. I fundamentally believe that developers should be left to their own devices to create whatever game that they want. I don't think they should be limited by a bureaucrat overseeing what they're doing, making sure that they're doing yes to that, no to that. I think they should be allowed to create the product that they, you know, want to create. And any limitations or changes that um, they make, that's up to them. That's their creative process. That's their decision to make. I don't think that we need to um, control them in that sense. KDR11K has a very strange take, which is, this is an extremely dangerous subject that has been used to justify euthanasia. <laughs> As if euthanasia is just objectively bad, there's no moral greys or no lines to kind of discuss and all of that sort of stuff. The Nazis had the category of life not worth living for disabled people that they sent to death camps. Okay, Nazis did bad things, but they also... Am I going to get kicked off of YouTube for saying that, you know, maybe not all of them were bad. I mean, I hear Hitler was uh, an artist and a lover of animals and a vegan. I mean, th those things are pretty okay, I think, you know? But no, no, he, he's a, he was a bad man and everything that he did was bad and we should hate it because definitely bad. Yes, people should be warned when they have dangerous ideas like that and realize how dangerous it is is Thank <laughs> you.
current year, 1984. Or is it 1884? I can never remember. I'm not Orwellian enough, am I? Dangerous ideas. How can I, an idea be dangerous? How can a subject, a topic for discussion be dangerous? It's a conversation that needs to be had. An extremely dangerous subject that has been used to justify euthanasia. <laughs> I'm not even sure how Mr. Kadia or Mrs. Don't want to assume agendas. I don't know how they got justifying euthanasia from Applebit's comment. But wow. That's just a gold mine right there. And the bizarre thing is that there there's really a mix of likes to dislikes, like KDR got ten up and one down, apparently. And Applebit with what I consider to be a very reasonable point, twelve up and twenty one down. Very strange. Apparently, the developer wrote the stories based on his personal experience. So if this is how someone that he knew felt, what's the problem? On the other hand, why does it matter whether it was based on his experiences or not? In his story, it's his story and his writing. If you're not happy with the story or the perception, no one is stopping you from writing your own. Changing the story to suit the whoever decides to be upset or offended is pathetic. I'm going to write to Rockstar and complain that I'm offended by how violent it is. A very apt point. If you want a particular story of a particular subject, there's no way to say this without sounding callous, but you can make it yourself. I mean, that's the reason why I started YouTube, is that there were certain types of videos that I wanted to see on YouTube that were not being made, so I made them myself. And to a T, it's his story and his writing. That's what he, he gets to decide that at the end of the day. And if he wanted to change it, then, you know, he wanted to change it. Sure. I just don't think that you should be changing your story because just because there were some people who were upset about how a certain character was represented, because that's how you decided to represent that character. That's how you decided that character would be. That character doesn't represent a portion of humanity. That character represents that character. Now we got some couple of interesting replies here. That's not at all what happened here though, is it? I mean, from my understanding it is, if they wanted to frame it like it wasn't, then maybe they could have done a, a better job of that, but from what I can tell, people were upset at how a character was portrayed, thinking that it instills this idea that disabled people are better off dead, and thus the developers decided to change the, the thing. I mean, it's not bad to change a game or a narrative because it was bad or it was poorly made and it needs some improvements. It's a completely different thing when some people are essentially offended. They're quite clear that they're making changes because they've listened to other people, changed their minds as a result, and now want to make changes to what is still their work to change if they wish. Having an open, a mind open to change isn't a bad thing. I'd agree with that second part, yeah. But the thing is, is that sometimes the suggestions that people make are good, they're well-founded, they're intelligent, and sometimes they're, well, not, and the difficulty is distinguishing between the two. 
And then we have a very strange comment. It says, because narratives like this, that we are better off dead, contribute to us getting murdered. Now, I'd like perhaps this article to show how this character suggested that we're better off dead. I'd like Matt Evans to, you know, give us a pointer as to how they got to that conclusion and how that apparently that's what everyone's gonna get from this one character who didn't like that they're now wheelchair bound like that's a very very strange message and and then he links to this article about this insane mother who suffocated her three disabled children like yeah people like this exist you can find this anywhere on the planet there are crazy people that's just a human nature you know for every one sane person there's another insane person it's just kind of the way of the world like murder will always exist atrocities will always exist war crimes will always exist there will always be terrible things happening on this planet but to tie or to tie this to a fictional character who viewed death as freedom is ridiculous because that character it's their decision they're fully conscious they're fully cognizant they know what they are saying they're maybe not in the the right mind but in a case like this this is murder or a plea for manslaughter whatever you want to call it this was not requested by the children maybe instead of blaming a video game for real world violence maybe we should taking a look at the people who commit the violence and try and figure out why they think the way they do and what we could do to i don't know prevent it from happening again this idea that video games cause violence in any way shape or form is ridiculous it's an it's a tale as old as time well maybe not but i don't know how this person came to this conclusion that because this one fictional character in this video game made the statement that you know death is a freedom from being in a wheelchair because he's rather cynical and sees life as very meaningless and, you know, wasn't in a wheelchair his whole life, so it's rather new to him, rather alien to him, and he doesn't like it. Equating that to some crazy lady murdering her three disabled children? That's ridiculous. Completely bonkers. And... It's, it's this narrative that we have to censor our media because our media influences the way that we think and therefore will turn us into psychopaths. Do you remember the um, the Batman shooting when um, there was like uh, two or three people uh, shot up a, a cinema that was showing Batman? That, that wasn't the film's fault, I don't think. I think it might have had something to do with the people who, you know, were shooting people. I don't think it, the responsibility lies on Christopher Nolan. Or any of the people who starred in that film who, or who edited it or anything like that or any of the messages or iconography or anything that was in that film. I think that was down to some very troubled people 
who really needed to get some help before this happened. But there you have it, a very strange case of a game having its narrative changed because some people were offended by how a certain very cynical character who wasn't wheelchair bound for his whole life but now is had a view on being in a wheelchair and now we get to see everything that happens thereafter i'll probably still play this game at some point when the time arises but for now i think that's all i have to say on this topic and i want to remind everyone that when you start apologizing it puts you on the back foot and once you apologize for one thing the people who are getting you to apologize well chances are they realize they can get you to apologize for all these other things that you may or may not have done, for these crimes that you may or may not have committed, for these atrocities, for these 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 poor, poor people. Look how look how fragile they are. Look how offended they are. We have to protect them and you've attacked them because you're a bad person. I do have to wonder when will it end? At what point? Have we censored ourselves enough to where everything's so watered down that we can't talk about anything controversial? Because it's all it's all offensive, it's all evil, and it's bad things. And it hurts someone's feelings. But anyway, this was a very different video to what I normally do. And I understand, you know, relatively political compared to what I normally do. Um, I'm not too sure if this sort of content is going to become a regular thing in any way, shape, or form, but it, this format has been something that I've been thinking about doing uh, at one point or another, but I've never committed to it. So, I don't know. It's all an experiment. It's all up in the air and weird and unknown, and I don't really know what I'm doing. Maybe this video will be terrible. Maybe it will be okay. But hopefully this has been entertaining at the very least, and hopefully informative. And an opener to a conversation, maybe. Because I think this stuff is important. I mean, this is the hobby that we consume. This is, for me, it's a little bit more than that. It's a passion. It's essentially a way of life. Like I said, I want to get into game design. And as politics get pushed further and further into our video games and as things like you can't talk about this, you can't do that start to crop up, it gets a little bit concerning as to what you can and cannot make content on. So I think topics like this are important and we shouldn't just dismiss it one way or another. Because ultimately, dismissing it is the equivalent of putting your head in the sand and pretending like none of the, none of the opposition exists, none of the uh, opposite opinion exists. And I think that's, well, self-evidently, very detrimental to the individual, but also very detrimental to whatever society or group that you're, you know, involved with or interacting with. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.